بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم That is with the name of God most gracious most merciful we open and bear witness that none is worthy of worship or devotion but our mighty God the one God to all of humanity we are eternally grateful and thankful we express our praise to the one God in no other we thank our mighty God for a long list of prophets that have came and have warned and have taught humanity this day that we come before you this day of Tarleen here in Shreveport, Louisiana, Master of Takwa, it is certainly a blessed day in that we are able to come before you and to bear witness to the oneness of God and to bear witness that the one that has been prophesied of throughout, throughout the history of man, the one that man has talked about, that man has looked for, that has had many titles, many names. And one probably most common among Christians and others is the name the Comforter, the Comforter. And we know that in Scripture, one by the name of Christ Jesus, or Jesus Christ. And Christ, if understood, it is a title, but it is also uh, a word that describes who we are for I, you, and you, and me, and Muhammad. Even Abdullah over 1400 years ago has mentioned that he is a man just like us, Mr. Lakuma, just like you. He's a human being. This message that he brought and all of the prophets brought, it was a message to assist man in his progression. We begin with a reading from Quran. And we begin with this reading from Quran, and for some of you that's possibly not familiar with the book, the Quran, it is a book that is taught to all of humanity, not just to a particular group. It is a book that addresses the soul, the heart, the mind of the human being. It is a book of guidance, and it is a book of clear vision. It clears the way, it clears the path. It gets rid of the smoke that's in the atmosphere for the minds and the soul of man. It says from Surah 27, entitled El Namil, El Namil. These are the verses of the Quran, a book that makes things clear, a guide in glad tidings to the believers, those who establish regular prayer and give in regular charity and also have full assurance of the hereafter. Sadaqla meaning surely Almighty God speaks the truth. Now we stop here and we want to read a few other passages in a few minutes. But we stopped here because when I came across the word it says those who establish regular prayer. Prayer is considered by many scholars as being the soul of all religions. Now that's because you would ask the question then, if prayer is considered to be the soul of all religions, then we need to look at religion. I would suggest that you look at the term religion. I would suggest that you look at the term soul. And while you are doing that, I want you to ponder over these words. And I want you to look in scripture and try to find the word soul, try to find the word soul, and find the word prayer, the significance in the Bible, the significance in the Quran, as to what is being said about the soul, and what is said about that which has given, or that which is given proportion and order, a proportion and order. How does the soul come about? If prayer is the soul of all religions, what is your soul? What is our soul? What is the collective soul? What is the collective mind? Some have used the word cosmic, cosmic man. As to those who believe not in the hereafter, we have made their deeds pleasing in their eyes. And so they wonder about in distraction. This day in time, 2018, 
November. We can certainly look around the world and we can cut on our television sets early in the morning, the 12 o'clock news, the 6 o'clock news, the 10 o'clock news, and we see atrocity after atrocity. And if you are not strong, as some say, if you are not prayed up, you will have great difficulties in coping with what is going on sometimes right next door and sometimes right in your own household. Are we worthy of our prayers being answered? Are we fulfilling our obligations? And we say as believing Muslims, my life and my death are all for Almighty God. Uh, <coughs> there's the term fig, fig, fig. And this particular word, fig, there's a verse in the Quran say, Watini wazetun, by the fig and the olive, by the fig and the olive. I want you to think for a moment about your mind and who you think you are. There is very, very rare where a person thinks that they are not intelligent to some degree. I got a mind. Some people will get upset if they feel that they're, they've been insulted. They say, I got a mind, I can think too. This is exactly what the Quran does. It encourages us to think. To think about what? Not only are we to think about our own origin, our own beginning, but we are certainly to think on the law, to remember the law, to remember God, I'm saying. And if we think on God, and as we mentioned upon Friday on those occasions, that if we remember God, God says, I will remember you. So I want to understand my positioning, my makeup. I want to see myself as more than just being a body. At a younger age, many women begin to look at themselves as they mature. They want their hair a certain way, their clothes a certain way. They want their appearance to be that which can be looked upon as looking good. Most people, again, unless something is wrong with them, they want to look good. They want to be stylish. They want the latest fashions. But for those who are believers, certainly we want to look and be presentable, but we want our minds and our hearts, our souls, to be presentable. Presentable to who? Presentable to the one God. Again, my life and my death is all for Allah. The emphasis that we place on certain material things, these things pull us away from our origin, from our origin. Figure, 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 figure. Fig, mint, fig. Fig, mint, fig. The fig is an education in itself. Oh, good old fig jelly. My mother used to make fig jelly and all types of other types of jelly. Pepper jelly, all types of jelly she would make. But the fig, let's look at the fig. Watin, watin, the fig. Watini, what's a tomb? By the fig and the olive. If I look at this word fig, I want you to think about a seed, and I want you to think about many seeds. Some like fig newton. Fig Newtons. And here's a little cookie with a whole lot of seeds in it from the fig. And if you look at, picture in your mind for a few moments, picture in your mind about the fig when pulled from the tree. If you turn it upside down, it looks like a tear. It looks like a tear. So here is the fig. And I want you to picture the fig as representing ideas, thousands of ideas, thousands of ideas. Here is a suggestion, or here is a clue in the figment of your imagination. Have you heard that term? Figment of your imagination. So this is an indication. God places in the environment signs, knowledge, information, to broaden our chest, to broaden our mind. And so all of these ideas that we have, that we come upon, 
These are ideas that are produced from our vision from the outside. Inside, external, internal, inside, we have the equipment, we have the tools that is vitally necessary, that is vitally important for our success. We are a vessel, and within this vessel is the real us. In this vessel is our soul. So here is the thing. How do you figure that? How do you figure that? How do you figure that? So this is no this is no accident that I'm saying these things. Man and his thinking, the wise, they came up with different solutions. They came up with different ideas in order to project a message. The philosopher, the poet, they can identify with the fig having all of these seeds. But look, in terms again as to how we say, or I've just said, the figment of your imagination. We are to utilize our minds. We're to utilize our imagination. Now here we are on this earth we are existing, and as we exist, the longer we exist, if we are hungry, if we are feeding our soul, if we are looking for answers and solutions as to how to better repay the debt, the deed that we owe to Almighty God. Our life, it should be a life of enjoyment. Our life is a life if we are following scripture, though it be the Bible, though it be the Quran, and as we say, we prefer the Quran, and we invite you to read the Quran. And as you read the Quran, this final revelation, please do not attempt to read the book, this book, the Quran, that which is to be proclaimed and read and announced. Do not read it thinking in the same manner as you would some novel some other book. And I even suggest this even for the Bible. You are looking for keys and the Quran is the key to the scripture that came before it. Any book that has been in print, that has been in writing, any book that has been recited for all times, the Quran comes to assist in the teachings and in the clarification of what has been said in the name of God. Falsely. So the Quran comes to clear that up. So all of these signs, all of this information that we have, some say, oh, that was so powerful, made the, made the hair stand up on my neck. And hair is very important. We're looking at, we're talking about symbolism and signs in creation. Symbolism and signs in creation. Don't take it lightly when you hear the word hair. For a moment, I want you to give me some feedback. For a moment, I want you to tell me what comes to your mind when I mention the word hair. Anybody, what does hair suggest to you? The hair on my head. The hair on your head. Growth. Growth, okay. The length of it, yeah. A what? The length of it. The length of the hair? The okay. type of hair, curly straight. hair, straight hair. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, now, now, from what y'all just said, because this is what we're doing. This is time in. And on Sunday, they have Sunday school in the churches. And many churches, they come out at different nights, all different nights. And they come and they stay, as they say, they study the word. Mm -hmm. And Jesus is known as the word. But now let's look at the hair for a few moments. It is mentioned that the hair covers all of the vital organs. Think about that. The eye. The ear, as man grows, the mustache, and naturally our private parts, and up on our arms, vital parts. And the hair also says something to us about sensitivities. Brother, you mentioned, you mentioned the length. Well, here was Samson. Take what y'all have said, your comments, your statements, and apply them to scripture. Applied to the word of Almighty God. Because, see, you worship looking for answers spiritually. You are seeking a spiritual understanding because certainly your spirituality, it is bigger than your material body. 
It is your spirit. It is your spirit that carries you. It is your spirit that picks you up. It is your spirit, your life form. Your life form is exhibited. Your position in life, it is exhibited in your spirit. And some say, oh, she's down in her spirit. He's down in his spirit. I need me a quick pick-me-upper. When we look at the hair, the hair, the hair, you also hear the word hair in hair. What, what, what does scripture say about uh, air? Though scripture says, and he breathed, and when he breathed into him a portion of his spirit, and some will translate it in terms of being the air, he breathed from his nostrils, or he breathed, breathed into man's nostrils, a part, a portion of his spirit. If I'm utilizing religious language, my nostrils, my nose, it is symbolic of my craving to see, to understand, to grasp. You are so nosy. We are making a tassel because much of what you have been taught to accept, just basically, just by the word, just by the letter itself, it has a higher meaning. Many read the Bible, many read the Quran, and you can see the big picture. Though you may be accepting and getting an understanding on your level of consciousness, it always has something more inviting. It always has something in the words of Almighty God to cause you to grow, to be strong, and to assist you in troubled waters. Now listen at this language and how I'm talking to you. So here it is that I'm trying to grow. I want to live as a human being. I want to find out where I came from. And if I knew little about my father, maybe my father was a journeyman. Maybe times were so difficult he had to work way from home, hours from home, days from home. Now this is talking about the progression of me. And here we are in an environment, and that environment is being shaped by our mother. And our mother is bringing us along. So now as we are coming alone in this early inception, I'm trying to find out where I came from. And I'm trying to find out how I have been established. And I know exactly where I came from and how I came about. So if I'm doing that scripture-wise, where is our origin? Scripture-wise, my beginning. Scripture-wise, tell me. In the garden. Huh? In the garden. In the garden. And so that garden is called what? Eden. Eden, the Garden of Eden, the Garden of Eden, the Garden of Eden. So now we're going back, and here is a concept that is being given to us. And as we often say when we speak of Adam, we are talking about the composite whole of humanity, not speaking of one particular person, hmm. but we are speaking of the whole of man when we speak of Adam in a higher Form. When we speak and we are exhibiting our imagination, it says humanity. Scripture speaks of humanity, the socialization of humanity. Joma, when we come to the Joma prayer service on Friday, what are we doing? We are coming together. We are binding together. Universe, oneness. Oneness, the oneness of our soul, the craving that we have. Nosy. Being so nosy. Oh, I got a nosy neighbor. And sometimes it's good to have a nosy neighbor. Because they can watch our houses when we are, we are gone, when we are away from the house. Or just be concerned about the neighborhood. So we are seeing a rising up for the believer. This shouldn't be a time, though it's painful, but it shouldn't be a time for the believers to be disheartened. Though we encounter <laughs> difficult times, God has decreed that the believers will be and are successful. But the believers must accept that. The believers must believe and the <laughs> believers must have faith. And God says, we will not have faith until we love one another. How for teachings? But these teachings are for the thinker. 
These teachings are for the righteous. These teachings are for the believers. These teachings are for the doers. For those who are willing to make sacrifices. And Jonah was called to go to Nineveh. He was called to go to Nineveh. <laughs> and he was swallowed up, it says, after being cast out into the ocean. And the ocean, what is the ocean? See, see, see water is water. Salt water. So now, you mentioned salt water. You mentioned, you mentioned, uh, we mentioned oceans. What other bodies of water are there? Lakes. Lakes. Rivers. What? Rivers. Rivers. Okay. So here we have all of these. And then what else? Ponds. Ponds. Streams. Now you want to identify all of these bodies of water, and the Quran mentioned that from these bodies of water, we extract, God has blessed us to extract meat, fresh and tender. Mm -hmm. And some of the water is salty and bitter, not fit for the consumption. And in the ocean, in the sea, you'll see creatures that are more organized in their movement. They are organized in their movement. Well, you look in some of the little ponds and some of the lakes, you see the fish going in all different directions. And some have made a joke, say, why are fish so smart? And the little boy said, because they travel in schools. This was an old saying, an old <laughs> joke that used to use. I thought I might just say a little, add a little something in there. <laughs> so here we are, talking about a school, talking about a fish, mentioning the ocean, and mentioning Jonah. What is significant about Jonah? Look at our individual lives and think about the story of Jonah. In our inception, in our beginning, orders, laws, opposition, naturalness, our nature, it exists within us. We have been given proportion and order. And we have a mind and the mind we have, it is so vast, it is ready to build its muscles. It is ready to stretch out. And so this mind that we have, this capacity that we have, the possibilities to be great achievers, men and women, not just men. So this mind that we have, in the beginning, in the beginning, what we have been given, the way that we have been prepared, it is in the most, in the most excellent manner. So there's nothing that we cannot achieve that others haven't achieved or have achieved. So God has made us equal in terms of all of us being human beings, all of us having the capacity to think. So here's Jonah in this big ocean and the way that we have been given to think about scripture and to think about water. Water says what to us? sociologically, psychologically. What does water say if we're talking about the language we may want to leave behind it? What does this water say? It's truth. Knowledge. Knowledge? What else? What about sensitivity? The examples that he gave us about water in terms of sensitivity, he gave an example about early morning, whether it's a lake, gigantic lake, whether it's a river, whether it's an ocean, early in the morning, the water it moved. It is still, still water, still water. But as the sun comes up, causing the tides to flow, as the sun shines on the sensitivities of the human being, the human being becomes enlightened and the human being begins to move, the believer, those who are praying daily, those who are making their prayers, those who understand that my sensitivities have to be governed. But look at thought. Look at progress. Look at me being successful. Look how almighty God, pardon me just a minute. Look how Look how Almighty God has positioned us 
to be not just thinkers, but successful thinkers. Successful thinkers. So, in my beginning, I am taught to be sensitive by my creator, giving me an opportunity to be concerned about others. But my mother, the environment, the message, the church, is to help establish the sensitivities of the human beings. If we look at our first trend of progress, of movement, all of us, men and women, and sometimes in their nature, the woman is more sensitive. That doesn't make her weak, but she's more sensitive about certain things. But then as we are at least sensitive about all of humanity, making sure that the family, that the neighbors, that the city, that the country, that the world is comfortable. World aid. We see where there are tragedies, where there are disasters, and even wars. We see there are those who rush in to give food and water, help shelter, restore shelter, restore homes. What am I getting at? We have to have a sensitivity for humanity, for all humanity, regardless of the race or the ethnic group. This is a bitter pill to swallow for some, because you want to think about just your color. You want to think about the atrocities that happened during slavery and even after slavery, which is good. You should never forget the things that has happened to you as a people, to us as a people. But don't forget that God is in charge and you will see on many occasions, some we don't see, you will see on many occasions how the wrongdoer, how the oppressor is being tortured, is being whipped in this life. You will see some that oppress you, they'll lose all of their faculties. They don't know how to return back to Eden. They don't know how to return back to their origin. So here was Jonah trying to escape his duties, trying to run away. He had been told to go to Nineveh. And in his going to Nineveh, supposedly he was to go. But he got to a point he felt that he knew more than God. So he was trying to escape. And it said that he was placed on a ship. Uh, he placed himself on the ship. And a storm arose. And as the storm arose, something that the seamen, those who worked on the ship, something clicked in their mind and said, we are in this storm because of Jonah. And it says they cast him overboard. Now, some again, I've given you an example, a metaphor, and saying that the ocean is this vast body of water. It represents a sensitivity. Now, I also want you to think about certain religious groups with a lack of knowledge through their leaders, some leaders, and that fits all religion. Some, they encounter and they perpetrate more sensitivities, more emotions in their teachings. They are preachers, whether they're teachers. Oh, are you downing preachers? No, I'm just saying we need more education. Watin, Watin, this big, this imagination, this mind, ideas, perfection. And God has said, he has perfected for us this day. That's what he was saying, Muhammad. I perfected for you this day, your religion. Perfection. The religion, the body, the information, the knowledge, the light, the guidance, the clarity. It is in us. It is waiting to come out. And as we get instruction from God's revelation, because in this world that the shaitan, that the devil has put together, oh, it is so alluring. That's why I say this world is an illusion. Not the world that God made, but the world that the shaitan has made. It is an illusion. It causes us to want those things that are not beneficial to our wholeness, to our soul. So here it is, Jonah was cast out into an ocean. Let's look at the ocean in a number of manners. Let's look at the ocean as being in an environment 
where there are people that are just thriving on their emotions, who are thriving on their sensitivities, and having no balance, having no stability. Why? Because they are indulging in things that are not prescribed by Almighty God. This is simple as that. But the response is what is needed. So here's this ocean. But now I want you to look at Jonah, because although he was rebelling, he didn't denounce God. He still believed in God. But he wanted to have it his way, as they say. Frank Sinatra used to say, I did it my way. Well, we can't do it our way. We have to do it in the manner in which God has ordained. We have to be on the path that he wants us in. We can't take a side road. We can't take a side road. You can say that the Quran or that scripture is our GPS. It'll get us there if we follow it. It is something, it is a book that will give us what we need in order for us to be successful. If you look at your numbers, you might join away. But I want to look at Jonah. And I want to think about Jonah being in a body, not Jonah the person, but Jonah the mind. I'm talking about you individually, man and woman, whatever your church affiliation is, the mosque, the synagogue. I want you to think about Jonah as representing a body of knowledge. Now, you might say that's difficult. Well, let's think about Abraham as a body of knowledge. Now, you might not be able to follow that, but in that we accept that Abraham is our father, and we have to follow the middle of Abraham, the way of Abraham, the guidance of Abraham, the positioning of his mind, a body of knowledge. I want you to think about Musa, a Moses, as a body of knowledge. You say, no, you can't identify with what I'm saying as accepting the prophets as bodies of knowledge. Then if you say that you are Christian, if you say that you are Christ-like, and in that you are supposed to know, as the body is one having many parts, so also is the body of Christ, if you accept this, if you believe this, then you understand within the church is structure that the physical building is not the church. But what makes up the church, it is the minds. It is the spirit. It is the bodies. It is the conviction of those who say, I believe. Of those who say, I want to serve though. They say Jesus, but they say, I want to serve Christ. And they say, Jesus is the way. Not understanding that the one that they call Savior, saying that Jesus is the Savior, as Muslim, well, as Muslim, let me go to the mic. This one, but as uh, okay, okay, okay. okay. Uh, okay. And all this good help. Oh, praise be to God. So then, as as Muslims and as believers. When we look at the body, the body represents a working organism. It, work, it represents something that is alive. Your body, your body is dead. Maybe you've been in accidents, some have been in accidents, and uh, they can't walk, they can't run, they can't utilize their arms, or they may have some type of disease. Like, they may have some type of disease that prevents uh, them from functionally normally as a human being would if they are in good shape or the body is in good shape. But when we look at this body that I'm referencing, I'm saying to you that that body has to be functioning. And if you are a believer in Christ Jesus, if you are a believer in your life, your life as a servant of God, then you will come into the realization that you can accomplish what you will if you are those who go to work. You have to understand, as Jonah had to understand, that in his movement, he was in a situation in the world where he was rejected. You have to understand that every prophet, 
that went before a people. They went before those people because it was a need for them. Because there were those within that group of people who cried out for help. And we established in the beginning of our discussion how prayer is the soul of all religions. So we cry out, just as we cry out individually in our prayers, those who believe in God. We cry out, and God answers our prayers. Sometimes our prayers are answered in such a way, it might not be the way we want it, but God says he fulfills his promise. So Jonah in this body, now I'm going to switch and talking about the ocean, I want you to look at the ocean, this vast body. I want you to look at it as false, a false religious environment. Mm. I want you to look at religion, this ocean, this ocean. Think about it for a few moments. I want you to think about, just imagine, this go along with me for a while. I want you to think about this ocean as representing corrupt religious teaching. Now, is this a downer? It's a downer for those who are misusing the words of God in order to oppress and to control humanity. Do you know that's the problem that we face today as human beings, regardless of your race? We're in the position that we are in as human beings, whether it's from the corruption from coming from the White House with the present president and others who are in government who are misusing the power that the people have given them. The reason that we are in this situation today as humanity is because we have those who have falsely represented the teachings of Almighty God. Now, many don't want to hear that because this, this modern lifestyle, and they say it's about fast cars, good looks, good looking women, good looking men, mellow madness, I'll call it for right now. Because the things that you see, they are not beneficial for the young people that's coming up, regardless of race. The things that we see is a gigantic myth that has been placed on the minds of humanity. Mm. We have to see that. So here was Jonah being thrown overboard. And once he was swallowed up by this big fish. Mm. Did you know earlier that the fish was used symbolically as representing Christianity? Oh, did this talk is about you down in Christianity? No. I'm down in the false concepts that have been placed within the body of Christ. Mm. Oh boy, you need to think about what I'm saying to you today. The false concepts that have been placed in the body of Christ, in the church, in the mosque, in the synagogues, all the religions, the major religions, they suffer from this disease, this cancer that is eating away at our souls. Teach the religion the way that it should be taught. Don't worry about anniversaries and raising. Who can raise you higher than Almighty God? So here's a mountain, this big mountain of knowledge that we have. Here is Jonah. I've got to talk about Jonah just a little bit more. Give me about five more minutes and we'll shut this down. In that Jonah was swallowed up by this big fish. Now something should tell you, just as a thinker, Many of you consider yourselves highly educated. Now, how in the world are you going to actually believe that a whale swallowed a man, housed him for a while, got tired of him, and spit him up on the shore? Now, that's beyond talking about a figment of your imagination. My goodness. Boy, if Walt Disney and Steven Spielberg couldn't come up with nothing like that. That is a master psychologist, a corrupt psychologist. Psychology the study of the soul. So here is man knowing that humanity loves a good story. Because many Americans, many of us, we love a good movie, a good story. Mm -hmm. Come here, baby. Let me tell you a story. Little children like to hear a story. And so they give us stories. And man has so many stories. You know, they used to call, they, they, they wouldn't say, first floor, what floor are you going to? Oh, I'm going to the fifth floor or the sixth floor. And some even get to the tenth floor and stay on the tenth floor. But man, in his movement, he's way up in the sky, the 24th floor, the 30th floor. He rises up. Some will rise up in their greed, but they're so disgusted because they can't control. They are seeing their rule come to an end. 
Satan's rule is coming to an end. In fact, it's ended. It's just a matter of not if those who are adhering to his world will stop worshiping him. Because the Quran scripture says he has no power over you other than what you give him. So this religion of El Islam, I invite you. But I also encourage you to go somewhere. You've already lost if you are denouncing Almighty God. And I said, well, I haven't really been taught. That's why I'm suggesting to read the Quran. Whatever book you read, get some understanding. Blesses he with an understanding. If you don't have an understanding, I don't care how many books you have, how many degrees you have, how good you look, how big your church or your synagogue or your mosque is. I don't care what type of clothes you may wear. They can be from Jerusalem, from Saudi, from Pakistan, wherever. That does not determine your positioning, your stance, your posture with Almighty God. The best clothing of the clothing of righteousness. So Jonah was cast ashore by the false ones in the society. By those who were corrupt. If you don't know, who know? I got to get rid of Jonah. He's questioning everything that we do. He's making us look like idiots. Well, go back to Abraham. Look what Abraham did mm. to his father and the associates. They wanted to know what happened to the Isle of God. And one said, I think a youngster, we saw a youngster in our temples. And they questioned him about it. They said, You're asking me? Ask your God. Go ask the big one. <laughs> and they said to Abraham, like, You know, statues can't talk. What will come that way and be that way in terms of our ideas, our mind, when we are questioned, not just in the next life, but even in this life, why are we listening to our minds and our minds have been defiled, our minds have been corrupt by this society, by this world? Why are we listening and using the information that God has given us to become excellent thinkers? So, Jonah was one who was put on the shore, balanced. Now he can stand erect. He can stand on the earth. And he mentioned the gourd plant, a plant that grows on rocks, on the shores of the sea. And they grow high up. It's a, it's a plant that's real seed, kind of like the fig. It's a lot of seeds in the gourd plant. But Jonah then recognized his wrong and he repented. Now that should be us. Knowing that in different positions, take different scenarios and talking about the ocean and talking about Jonah and talking about the whale, look at a whale as being a big institution that will swallow you up. But when you don't fit into that institution, they seek ways to destroy you. Mm. If I look at the teaching, and I know some would disagree with this from your different schools of thought or from different countries, but for us, we can look at the example of the honorable Elijah Muhammad. And don't panic, because God has said in scripture that all of the believers, all of the sons and daughters of Adam are honorable. So don't trip. But if you look at him, we look at him man was it Muhammad. I'm naming people from among us. If I look at the institutions of Booker T. Washington, George Washington Carver, if I look at this body of knowledge that is out there, you have those who seek to block and to destroy those who stand up for what is right. You are obligated as a believer, as a human being, to stand for what is right and to teach the word that it should be, or teach the word the way that it should be. So Jonah repented, and God bestowed upon him his holiness. But whether it be Jonah, whoever it was, if it got up to the time of Christ Jesus, now let me really make you think, hopefully, Christ Jesus, Christ Moses, Christ Abraham. It's a title. It's a descriptive title. It's a description of actually, again, us, as I said earlier, of what's inside. And so when I look at the term Muslim, I'm saying the same thing. And God says, come ye together, willingly or unwillingly, and finally. Mountains. I'm giving you different keys. 
mountains. We know if we say mountain, we are talking about a high structure, something that is really elevated. And science say that as mountains, the higher the mountains go up, the colder it is on the mountain, on the mountain top. The cold it is. And Dr. King said he had been to the mountain top. They say what was on the mountain top. And Jesus had been to the mountain top. And Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon them, had been to the mountain top. Something about this mountain. Here were men who had addressed the high minds, the dignified, the aristocrats, the rich. They saw them for what they were. They didn't denounce them at first. They were trying to give them an opportunity to accept the manner which God has given to all humanity in being fair and equitable and not being an oppressor. So this religion, it does away with the shackles, much more so than just the physical shackles, but the shackles that oppress our mind, that enslave our minds. So don't be cold because you rise up, because you are a leader, because you're a big executive, knowing that you have rose up. Remember how you rose up. Look at Steve Jobs and others who were millionaires and others who were considered as being billionaires. Say, if they had the opportunity again, they would take a different path. Like with Steve Jobs, his, his, um, his problem was, he said, one of his regrets, that he didn't spend a lot of time with his family. He was more so concerned about getting that almighty dollar. The OJ is talking about that dollar. That's where his focus was. And he lived the rest of his life before he passed in giving away wealth. Because you couldn't take it with him. I saw this caption. Someone sent it to me the other day. And this Muslim. He had on this attire from the east, a little, little kufi, and uh, his other attire. And he was on a bicycle. He pulled up in his main street. And while he was waiting at the light, a Lamborghini pulled up next to him. Now, both of them were going in a particular direction. They were on a journey. They were trying to get to a particular location. But the caption read, when both of them die, they will both be buried six feet under. The grave will be the same, equal. So I'm saying to you, those who are viewing Islamic perspective and called to freedom, know that all of us will return to God no matter what our color is. We will return to the Creator no matter what your color is, and that whatever we have, we can't take it with us. Mm. Peace be unto you. Thank you for viewing Islamic perspective and called to freedom. I saw it.